Hey there guys, my name is Jason and I want to thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. Uh, today I've got a special treat, more probably more so for me than you. It is a special promo Lego piece and during uh, June 2024, if you purchased anything uh, over X amount of dollars, I don't know, $200 on lego.com, they tend to throw in some promotional pieces and I really dug this one. This means a lot to me because I love science fiction and uh, this set is a great one. This is set 40690, ages 12 and up and 351 pieces. It is a tribute to Jules Verne and it's an awesome diorama depicting three of his uh, special works there, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, Around the World in 80 Days, and one that I'm actually not too familiar with is Five Weeks in a Balloon. But this is a really cool piece. I'm looking forward to building this and probably put it out on my mantle or somewhere for people to see in my house. I don't think I'll score a little away in my office. I might even take it to work. But uh, anyway, for those that have missed this piece and are interested, I would suggest uh, looking on eBay for that. Uh, tend, uh, see, a lot of times people uh, take these Lego promotional pieces and throw them up on eBay because maybe they're just not interested in it. But for those that are wondering what the price point is, a Lego uh, does has uh, a suggested MSRP of $24.99 on that. But without further ado, let's break it down, uh, the box, and uh, start building a tribute to Jules Verne. All right, here we are at the table. We are opening set 40690, a tribute to Jules Verne's books. I'm looking really forward to this one. I think it's really cool. Minifig, and as you can see here, we have, uh, I'm assuming this is the Nautilus. Right here, that's gonna be in a book with a, like a little bookmark here. Uh, we have a train and we have a balloon to symbolize uh, around the world in 80 days, uh, five weeks in a balloon, and of course, 20,000 leagues under the sea. 351 pieces. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let me get, I should have a little razor here from my painting hobby. So, yeah, let's take my little X-Acto knife tool out here and let's go ahead and cut in. I tend to save the boxes for Legos because you never know. There are collectors out there that like to have all boxes intact, not smashed or anything like that. Let's go ahead and pull everything out. So we have an empty box. I'm gonna just set that off to the side and looks like we have four bags. There's bag number four, uh, bag number three, which has got a bag within a bag. Same with bag number two and bag number one. We have some pieces here that I assume are going to form part of the book. And uh, we have a little sticker sheet here. I don't know, hopefully the reflection isn't too bad or the glare from outside, but uh, it does say Jules Verne on there. And uh, somehow, some way, this the instruction manual kind of got a little bent, bent out of shape right there doesn't really matter though so let's just for the heck of it in case people are wondering it is 78 pages long and of course as always towards the back here the back pages tells you all the different pieces and what's really nice about lego is you could always go to their website and um, if you register your piece there's a good chance that if you're missing anything or something gets damaged uh, you can let them know the pieces by the part number and they will send it to you. They're pretty good about that. But let's go ahead and open up. Uh, I think I'll stick the manual down here. And I'm going to put these bags out of the way. It's too bad this is kind of bent up. But uh, we're going to go ahead and empty bag number one. Let's go ahead and get the cellophane out of the way. And of course we have another little bag here. 
go ahead and empty that out. Now, if you never haven't built Lego in a long time, or you're new to building Lego, I will tell you, and um, I've, I've built a couple of sets over the last few months or whatnot, that uh, sometimes you do get extra pieces, it's, I, which is nice. Uh, it's better to have extra pieces than not enough pieces. But in some of the other sets that I've built, just as an example, I have a bag here at my table I'll show you. These are extra pieces that came uh, a combination of two or three different sets that uh, I've been building. So if you're building a set and you say, why, why do I have this extra piece? Don't worry about it. Uh, there's a good chance that you got an extra in there. So let's turn the page here. And the very first thing it wants us to do is build Jules Verne himself. So let's see, we've got his uh, legs and his body right there and let's get his head it's got a little screen printed uh beard white and gray beard on him and his uh of course his hat or not hat his hair piece and uh they're using a little looks like a solid black flame piece here uh for a quill as if he were writing something and that's just going to fit right in his hand like so and we have another piece here that looks like a printed letter with a little uh, seal on it which is kind of neat detailing i like the tuxedo on him i wonder if they'll ever it'd be neat if they did james bond sets now that i'm thinking of it that that would be a series lego hey if you're listening uh, I would like to see some uh, James Bond sets with his different cars and maybe, oh, the, the, the submarine car. Uh, was it a Saab or an Audi from The Spy Who Loved Me? And, of course, there's Austin Martin and some of the other cars. And, of course, you could, you've got Sean Connery, Lansby, uh, Craig, uh, Moore. Uh, you could probably get the different James Bond minifigures out of that. So work on that IP. Anyway. There's our figure here. We'll put Jules off to the side and let's see what we have. So we want this black piece right here. And we are going to turn it slightly and add this kind of brownish red color. Brick red, deep color red. I always I like this color red. And uh, we're going to go ahead and add these wings to it looks like we are making the base for the book we have two of these and we want to line it up as such all right and we're going to go ahead and turn the page and let's see we're going to use this big blue piece and that we're going to kind of meld these three together get a little strength in there as well and get this these lime green one by two smooth tiles and put that in place all right uh next up a couple more of these little pieces i don't know looks like they could be hinges to towards the the back spine of the book that's what i'm guessing so we have three of them. That was the first piece that we put down, and now we've got two on either side. I imagine it would be the spine of the book. So if we turn this sideways, you would see, uh, I, I imagine the book is going to you know, kind of open up like this. At least that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that right now. Don't know for a fact. Um, got these little one by one studs these little tiny ones they're not really studs i don't know what you call them little placers here i think more of the studs more like uh well it's even thicker longer than this the kind of the traditional one by ones um all right now we need this longer piece right here and that is going to so we have this white is gonna come right off the edge slightly. Go ahead and turn the page. 
And I apologize for the glare for you guys watching on camera. I can see the outside where I sit in my office here in my room. It's late afternoon on a Thursday and the sun is uh, kind of setting there and it is beating down on the back in my windows. So go ahead and put these nice little curved pieces on. Here there should be, looks like about seven of them. So there's three, four, yeah, it looks like there should be seven pieces here. Go ahead and do that. And now moving on to the next page. A little bit more involved here. Looks like we're making the bookmark. So let's kind of do this in order so I don't get too mixed up. Uh, looks like we're going to go use this and make sure that I've got this turned right, which I, of course, I do not. So we want, we should have two of these pieces here and they are going to mirror each other like so. And then take these green pieces and there is our little bookmark and it is going to go off to the side right next to this open white piece right there. And on the opposite side, we have this other green rounded piece like so. Next up, we're going to take one of these long black pieces. Now, there, these weren't in a bag, or at least one of them weren't in a bag. And just goes there. I'm sure we'll tighten this up here in a minute because it's pretty darn loose. Yeah, we're going to take four of these smooth brick red pieces and we are going to uh, lock this in place. Now this should give you a pretty good idea of the overall footprint. Can't be much bigger than this. So that'd be nice on a uh, desk shelf. Like I said, if you have a little library at home, or maybe if you work at a uh, university or um, something like that, it'd be a nice little firepiece uh, setting. And let's see, now we're going to get, so oh, we need two of these. So this is going to form some of the pages of this book from looking at it from this side here. And then we have one large white piece and this blue piece. Now, according to this, it's going to butt right up against there. So we should have a space of two right there. And turning the page and now we've got three of these yellow pieces and this yellow piece is going to go right smack in the middle like so and on either side lined up. Not exactly sure what that's for. Maybe it's just some spacing inside. We'll find out as we go. We have these three larger tan pieces now. Go ahead and put the, oh, actually I'm missing. I should have, been, I should have put a blue piece in. See that? I already, I already messed up. I already messed up there. So we want to take this yellow piece out and we have this blue piece in before this yellow piece right there. Okay, now we're going to put these tan pieces in. So one, two, and three, like so. And we'll just now we're moving down and we've got this piece here and this piece here. And just like that, it is telling us to move on to bag two. So as I said earlier at the start of this video, 
um, we have a couple pieces left over. So we have a, one of these little one by ones and another black quill left over. So these will go into my extra bags that I can use for something else. And with that, we are going to go ahead and dive right in here in a second to uh, bag number two. All right, I had a slight technical difficulty there. For some reason, I, I broke open bag number two and looked up and realized uh, I was starting to build some pieces and I looked up and I saw that the camera had just stopped on me. So uh, I went back, I kind of tore a couple pieces apart to get back to the beginning of bag number two. So things look a little bit uh, different from that smash cut there. That is why I am re-recording some stuff here because I, the footage got uh, corrupt somehow. But anyway, uh, there are three bags left. I'm starting here with bag number two. And since we have a, uh, this pays tribute to three of his books, we will go ahead and kind of talk about them. And of course, probably his most famous one, or probably today, uh, what most people uh, recognize is um, Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, it was first published, in, I believe it was 1871, maybe 1872, but I think 1871 sounds about right. And it is the story of uh, Phileas Fogg, and he is a well-to-do Brit, I believe, and he uh, makes a claim that he can circumvent the world in 80 days. And the antagonist there is, a, is an inspector. I believe that thinks he's going to cheat or not be able to do it in 80 days and wants to keep him on the up and up. So, of course, he trails him. Uh, or tries to trail him through the whole adventure to make sure that um, everything again is on the up and up and uh, no one is being cheated and his claims are true and of course shenanigans ensue and uh, uh, Mr. Fogg there has a sidekick that travels with him and they go all around of course the world via you know train and ship and balloon and plane and everything else because uh, there is money at stake i believe there was a bet at the time uh twenty thousand pounds which you know back uh, maybe in the 18 late 1800s must have been a great sum of money and uh so anyway uh, that movie, they made a movie starring David Niven, and that was uh, 1957. And that won, I believe, an Academy Award, and back then it was considered an adventure film and a comedy film. And additionally, then again in 2004, uh, Jackie Chan... Uh, there was a reboot of the movie 20 years ago starring Jackie Chan. And for those that know Jackie Chan, he is probably the modern day, uh, well, or lack of a uh, better uh, equivalent, uh, Bruce Lee, known mostly for his uh, martial arts and particularly doing many of his own stunts in most of his movies, just kind of like Tom Cruise does today. I think he, Jackie Chan, has actually injured himself quite a few times. and uh, But he takes great pride in his work. And, um, you know, I, he's still with us. But uh, he, he, he did a lot of the movies with Chris Tucker back in the day. It was kind of a, a buddy cop uh, series. Uh, it's kind of the name of it is escaping me right now. But they did a buddy cop series, at least two movies, possibly three. Uh, Jackie Chan, of course, uh, in the Karate Kid reboot movies with uh, Jaden Smith, I guess, played uh, Miyagi. Now, this is a really interesting piece. 
Um, I don't think I've ever seen these pieces before, and I don't know what set, unless they custom made them for this uh, set, which I don't know. I have never seen these pieces before. Now, I can only imagine just the way that I'm building these. These are going to be the struts for the train, but I have yet to figure out or understand, just following the instructions here, how this is going to be built or how this is going to fit in. Uh, right now, I can tell you, um, this is not making a lot of sense to me, but um, I'm actually kind of baffled by things right now on how this is going. But I am going to trust the process here. Now, speaking of going around the world in 80 days, I think as a young kid, I was enamored with it because I wanted to travel the world. I mean, who di who doesn't want to travel the world when you're young? And uh, I know specifically when I was a young child, I was really big into Egypt and anything Egyptology. And uh, of course, romanticizing about the pyramids and the mysteries of the pyramids and et cetera, et cetera. So when <clears throat> the James Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved Me came out, of course, I fell in love even more so because, um, you know, we've got a great character and we are, you know, we've got a spy, a British spy uh, doing things there in uh, Egypt. And... Uh, but now today, with the state of the world, unfortunately, I don't think I will be visiting Egypt anytime soon or the Middle East. I have to give credit. I do have a friend that traveled by herself recently to go to Egypt, uh, and she is she is meeting a bunch of other girls, and they are. Uh, some kind of package where they're on the ocean there and it's and it's fully uh it's kind of like a yacht or a miniature cruise ship it's not a cruise ship it's just a miniature thing i don't know there might be like 30 people tops on this whole ship and um she, I, i'm i'm very envious of her i would like to uh do that and unfortunately i haven't really seen much of the world like I would have liked to have seen by my now. I did have the uh, fortunate um, issue of my daughter getting married a few years ago and they had a destination wedding in Jamaica. So I was able to go to Jamaica and spend a week there and that was very cool. A lot of mosquitoes, very humid, but uh, it was it was interesting. Uh, and I had a good time there. Uh, I'm a resident of California, so of course I've been down to parts of Mexico, but not recently. A lot of, a lot of stuff happening there right now. Uh, it's a kind of a sad state of affairs with the the cartels and uh, the border issue with between the U.S. and uh, Mexico right now. Um, not really feel too safe at times. So uh, unfortunately, I can say I haven't uh, traveled too much. I have been to Canada. I don't really count that. It just feels like the United States extended. I apologize if you're from Canada. Uh, been to Canada years ago. Great national parks. Very expensive though. Very, very expensive compared to the United States. Uh, but I have never been to Europe. I've never been to uh, other continents. My wife and I have discussed going to Ireland. We've discussed going to Italy. Uh, that's my heritage, actually, Italian. I'd like to see Italy. Um, my other daughter ja and went with her best friend and their boyfriends because her friend got married. And they just spent uh, about two weeks in Italy. And uh, I am, I'm envious of that. So uh, my wife and I need to start doing some more traveling before it's too late. Anyway, as you can see, I am building this very unique piece, which I still don't quite understand what's going on here. Um, we'll see when it all fits together, but I'm, I'm just fo following the process right now. 
coming up to a part where I'm using this really unique pink piece. And now I am getting these blue pieces here and looks like we have some, um, some studs or some connectors facing up, some connectors facing down, and that is going to go on the bottom like so. And yeah, this is still really interesting because I have no idea what is happening here. So let me turn the page and catch up with you guys here in a second. All right, back at it. So let's get back to talking about the movie while I'm thinking about it. I need six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, the movie, again, I think I said 1957 earlier. It was actually 56, and uh, Shirley MacLaine was also in the movie. And uh, I think the budget for it was... Um, wasn't too much actually well we're, we're also talking 1956 so the uh, budget for the movie was six million dollars and it returned uh its return uh in the theaters was 42 million it was nominated for uh eight academy awards i think it won uh five five of those including believe it or not best picture so for those people that are movie files, um, yeah, you can see a family G-rated movie won uh, Picture of the Year, or at least the Academy Award way back then. Okay, I am still building here. Oh man, these are like little light blue pieces are kind of going all over the place right here so we've got two more of these and we've got uh, two more so i just want to make sure that i've done this right so i have two we have got three facing out we have two facing out to this way we have one facing this i used my six bricks or my six one by two uh, spacers if you will okay now this attaches so we're going to flip this around okay so it looks like okay there we go there we go there we go we're going to attach it like this so we have we should have one sticking out there three connectors there one connector there and there we go still super interesting okay and i'm we're still adding on to this wow 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 okay we're gonna get these one by sixes we've got two more of these here maybe you guys can see it i can't see it yet but uh we're getting there so anyway, my closest thing to traveling around the world right now is I like watching the TV show The Amazing Race. Um, I feel I, I'm living vicariously through the contestants on there. I uh, like to see some of those countries. Some of those uh, uh, African countries look amazing. Some of those European countries just look amazing to me. Specifically, I think it was a few seasons ago, they were in Austria or uh, somewhere there. It wasn't Germany, but it was somewhere in that neck of the woods. Um, and it looked just like the Swiss Miss Chalet, like one of those things like right out of a fairy tale, the cobblestone streets, the architecture, the green in the background, the blue skies. I mean, it looked like any cartoony uh, poster picture postcard that you would see uh, kind of thinking like the type of like the sound of music uh, if you will okay wait a second there's that that was one I'm sorry I'm backtracking here 
I think we're building two of these things. Okay, so that I'm going to set this one aside right there. I think now we're on to number two, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. So it looks looks like, yeah, it looks like we're kind of building another one of these. Like so. Oops. Yeah, well, we're running out of pieces, so we're not to bag three yet, but we're in the home stretch of bag two, and it looks like we're building another one of these type of wall kind of structures. Okay, here we get back to the struts again. So basically, same thing. We're going to put these rounded tan pieces here. We're going to use these navy blue ones at the bottom of this A-frame and we're going to stick this other A-frame on top and yeah uh, put it like so there so we're, it looks like we're building the same thing just mirror image of it okay so now I want two of these uh, dark blue pieces Another one of these. I don't know exactly what you call those pieces right there with the the hollow uh, connector. Grab two more of our oval blue ones, like so. And now we want a long piece here. And whoops, I. Okay. Oh, there it is. Thought I was missing a piece right there, but just hiding from view. All right. So, so now we're going to attach that like so. So kind of a convoluted design, if I must say. But we're still going here. And we have this piece right here. Flipping the page, we're adding a couple more. I'm kind of just speed building this, if you will. Making sure that I've got everything. All right, and now we are going to attach that to this side. Okay, and now we'll cap off the top here with that piece. And we use this little L-shaped piece there and this green piece and that piece right there. Okay, now we are going to mirror these. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So it's showing here on the bottom of page 35 that somehow I am going to get these together. Okay, so let me orientate this so it makes sense to me because, all right, so it looks like we're attaching it like this. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, okay, now I think I see. I think I see now. So if I have this built correctly, which I think that I do, Yep, we're going to press this large piece. See these four two by twos down there? They're going to fit into these four things right here. So, yep, we're going to push it right down into there. And I imagine this might be the back of the book. And see what, how many pieces we have left over. Well, okay, not too bad. We have two pieces left over from that build. And we are ready to get into bag number three. But with that being said, I am going to take a brief pause. I am going to go ahead and um, 
stop for right now. You won't notice it because we're going to get right into bag three, but it's getting pretty warm in this room, my office right now. And uh, I've been talking for a good uh, 25 minutes on this. I didn't think it would actually take this long, but we're going to go ahead and stop here and pick up with bag three uh, with the magic of video editing here in a minute.